Just seeing Cyberpunk 2077 run this well on an iGPU is absolutely amazing. I mean, I'm kind of blown away here. With that faster DDR5 RAM, this has definitely turned out to be the most powerful iGPU we've ever seen. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking this Ryzen 6000 powered mini PC to the next level by adding faster RAM here. Now, if you watch the channel, you've probably seen this a couple times. This has really turned out to be one of my favorite PCs of 2022. It's the Minus Forum UM690. This is powered by the AMD Ryzen 9 6900HX, and as you might know, with these newer 6000 series APUs, we've got RDNA 2 based graphics. And usually, there's not a lot we can do to kind of up the performance of integrated graphics, but with these new 6000 series chips, faster RAM is really going to help out, and this does support DDR5. Out of the box, the UM690 is going to be coming with 4800 MHz RAM, but in this video, we're going to add 6000 MHz DDR5 to this and unlock a lot of performance. But before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office, but the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84, but if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone. And basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed. And that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get that new RAM inside of the UM690. It's actually pretty easy to pull the bottom off. There's just four screws. And I do want to mention that Minus Forum doesn't condone or recommend overclocking the RAM that comes in this. Now from the BIOS, we've got that setting to take the RAM up. So what I've done is just picked up some faster RAM. It's actually DDR5 5600 megahertz. But with a little bit of tweaking, I was actually able to get this up to 6,000 megahertz very stably in the UM690. If you pick one of these up that comes preloaded with RAM from Minus Forum, you're going to get Kingston RAM. But what I've got here is some Team Group Elite DDR5. This is their 5,600 megahertz version, and they only sell this in 16 gigabyte sticks. So I did have to buy two 16 sticks here, bringing it up to a total of 32 gigs of RAM in this mini PC. But at the time of making this video, this is the fastest SODIMM DDR5 that I could actually find on the market. I know Hynix has some 6400 megahertz coming down the line, but nobody is selling it just yet, at least to the public. So I've got the RAM installed, but now I need to do a little bit of tweaking from the BIOS. And I'm also going to show you a few other settings that I use from the BIOS and in Windows just to get better performance out of this PC. As soon as you boot the UM690 up, just press delete on the keyboard a few times. It'll bring us right into the BIOS. It's going to state that this RAM is running at 4800 megahertz because we haven't adjusted it yet. So from the BIOS, I'm going to go to Advanced, SMC, Common Options. And from here, we've got a few settings that we can change, like the TDP and the RAM speed. Plus, we can adjust the fan curve if we want to. And as you can see, it's set at 4800 megahertz. We can take it right to 5600 megahertz given the RAM speed that I'm using now, but I've done some testing and I've actually been able to take this Team Group Elite RAM up to 6000 megahertz in this PC. So for the memory target speed, I'm going to go to 6000. And if everything worked out correctly and the RAM can handle it, it will be at 6000 megahertz. Now, when it comes to the system configuration, this is going to actually change the total TDP of the CPU. We've got a setting here for 65 watts, but it actually defaults back to 30. But I always set this to 54 watts. And with this, we've actually got a boost up to 65 watts, which will help out for a little bit, but it'll come right back down to around 54 to 55 watts. All right, so here it is. I'm running Windows 11 Pro. Give you a quick look at the configuration here. As you can see, we've got that Ryzen 9 5900HX, eight cores, 16 threads, and this is an amazing APU. I mean, those higher wattages really help out with this. 
Moving down to RAM, as you can see, we've got 32 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 6,000 megahertz. And the reason this is going to help out with our integrated graphics performance is because these iGPUs use system memory or RAM as VRAM. When it comes to a dedicated GPU, it's got its own VRAM built in. You'll see something like the RTX 3060 listed with 12 gigabytes of GDDR6. Now that's a lot faster than our DDR5, but we're running this at 6,000, which in turn is a lot faster than DDR4 or even the the stock configuration of this mini PC running at 4800 megahertz. So I've got everything set up in Windows and the BIOS, now it's time to see how this thing performs. And first up, we've got Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, medium settings. We're getting an average of 91 FPS out of integrated graphics with this game at 1080p. This isn't the hardest one to run, I mean it's a very well optimized game, and you know if you did want to do 120 FPS with this, you can go down to 900p medium settings and lock it right there, it'll run it all day. The next thing I wanted to do was just run a few benchmarks and give a comparison between the 4800MHz RAM and the 6000MHz RAM that we're running right now. First one here is 3D Mark Night Raid. With that 6000MHz DDR5, we got a 29,477. And with 4800 megahertz RAM, 25,757. So yeah, we're definitely seeing a little bump here. Next up, we've got Fire Strike on 6000 megahertz RAM, 7,450. And on 4800 megahertz, we got a 6,566. And with Time Spy, we finally broke the 3000 mark on integrated graphics. We actually got a 3,142. And on 4800 megahertz RAM, 2,852. I was actually really surprised that we were able to break that 3,000 mark. I mean, a little over here, and I've been trying to do this for a while. So adding this RAM to the 6900HX definitely helps out with GPU performance, but these are synthetic benchmarks. Let's see how this thing can really game. Spider-Man Miles Morales. I was actually really impressed with the performance here, uh, given that this is a newer AAA game. I've done a lot of testing with, you know, the new Spider-Man remastered and this on all kinds of integrated graphics. This is the best performance that I've seen so far, even when you compare it to like the 6800U with that faster 6400 megahertz RAM. Here's Cyberpunk 2077, low 720p, and we're getting an average of 87 FPS out of this game. Uh, you know, if you've tried to run this on even a dedicated GPU, you know how hard it can be to run. And of course, we're at low setting 720p. We're still working with an iGPU, but this is really great. I mean, to be able to play this over 60 FPS on integrated graphics is pretty amazing if you ask me. GTA 5 was another one that ran phenomenally on this little setup here. We're getting an average over 101 FPS out of this game. 1080p normal settings. I know it's an older one, but it's still a lot of fun to play, and it runs very well with this mini PC. Here's The Witcher 3 at 1080p with a low medium mix, we're getting an average of around 71 FPS. If you wanted to take this down to 900p, it actually jumps up quite a bit, you can get an average of around 92, but uh, at 1080, still fully playable. And finally, God of War 720p original settings. Now ever since this game released, I've been really trying to get a steady 60 out of it with integrated graphics, especially Radeon, be it Vega, or even the RDNA 2 graphics. And with this running 6000 megahertz RAM, we can actually get an average of 68 FPS out of this game. So obviously, adding faster RAM to the 6000 series powered mini PCs is going to up that GPU performance, and of course we're going to see more powerful iGPUs in the future, hopefully we get RDNA 3 and a desktop variant. Uh, that's really all I would personally need. If I could play my favorite games, even just locked at 60 1080p, then I'd be perfectly fine with a setup like that.
But when it comes to integrated graphics right now, at the time of making this video, these are the most powerful integrated graphics that I've seen so far. I mean, even compared to something with LP DDR5 RAM running at 6400 megahertz, since the Radeon 680M in these H series Ryzen chips actually runs at a little higher clock, 2400 megahertz, as opposed to 2200 megahertz. And on top of that, having beefier CPU cores with the HX really does make a difference. But yeah, this thing's awesome, especially with that faster RAM really appreciate you watching let me know your thoughts in the comments below and uh, as soon as we can get something more powerful I'll definitely be getting my hands on one and making a video if you have any questions let me know down in the comments and like always thanks for watching